Hi everybody. Today we are talking about MCP. I think probably the most requested video of, of the history of this channel. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. So as a bit of context, large language models are just able to predict text. But if you start giving them access to what we call tools, so tools are a way for them to execute code. So you define directly when you talk to the model, you define a series of available tools to them. For example, perform a web search, book uh, my calendar, or place a reservation by making a phone call. And these tools right now is the Wild West. It's just an example of tool. So ex imagine I go to this little search UI here and I, I ask, what is crypto? Uh, obviously a large language model could answer, but if you want it to, in his answer, search the web, you would be able to do something like this, where you would perform a search on, on Google, on, on Brave Search, on DuckDuckGo, whatever, and then you would get the model to call this, give it the result, and then generate an answer for you. The big problem here, um, and the reason why the people over at Entropic came up with this, this concept is that Everybody has their own way of doing, thing, of doing this. There's the OpenAI way, there's the Jiminy way, there is the Entropic way. So we kind of need a different, uh, a standard, a way to get this information into large language models. This is what MCP is. High level architecture. MCP contains two things, a server and a client. The client will be actually responsible for running the LLM. So the client here will be an implementation of any model. This is not strictly um, restricted to cloud. However, of course, it's probably some of the best support because this thing was built by Entropic. But the big action happens in the server. The server is responsible for listing the tools. It's, it's responsible for performing the actual um, function call. So the actual code is executed on the server. This allows you to make a pretty good isolation. And it's also standardizing the data format. So it's standardizing the communication between the client and the server. So this is in essence MCP. Let's have a look at code um, a little bit. So when you are working in TypeScript, you will be working with this library, Model Context Protocol SDK. This is also available in Python. And when you want to create a server, you will be importing their server constructor. And in the server, you will be passing it a few metadata, the name of your server, a version, the available tools. In our example, we will be using Brave Search to perform generalized web search. So just in any query like, what is the latest um, car to be released? Or local search, for example, find me in a, a coffee shop in my area. So then as we list those, we will have to, of course, implement these tools. So just going simply over them, these are really just, you know, performing a web search. Um, I'm calling the Brave API here. This is not the focus of the video, but just understand your imagination can run wild. Anything you want AI to do, if it can be done in code, you can put in an MCP server. And this is the buzz because now we have this way of standardizing how all of this is working. So in your server, this is all you have to do. You define a few functions that you want to make available. And then you simply start your server. Here I'm, I'm uh, using the local way. However, you can do this over HTTP as well. You don't have to do this, you know, over like just your command line. And that's pretty much it. Integrating a client is not that much more difficult. If we go over to this basic client file here, you are going to do the same thing. You will be establishing a transport. In our case, we're using the local transport. What this means is that all of the communication will happen locally on your computer. A good example of this would be if you have the cursor IDE and you give it access to an MCP server on your computer, you could decide that your server will be able to read your files, perform web searches, give it access to even like a sensitive database. So this is the, this is the use cases. Anything that have an agentic workflow and you want to augment the capacities, 
you will implement a client, for example, this just simple client here on my command line, or something like in Cursor, and a lot, of, a lot more people are actually building clients for this. But let's see what it actually does. So the client itself is really just responsible for listing the tools and performing um, and asking the server to perform the tool call. So let's go ahead and run over this little demo here. And by the way, all of this code will be available on GitHub and I'll make a blog post on this so you have a bit more information. I'll just put the font size a bit bigger here. So I will be running with um, Bun.js, my example here. So the few things, let's scroll back up. The few things we did is that we asked the uh, server, the MCP server, to list the available tools. We have Brave Web Search and we have Local Search. So here, if I go back to my basic client example, all that I am doing, I'm telling the client, please call this tool on the server and I give it the details of my query. So my queries were pretty simple. Give me the latest AI um, research paper and find me a coffee shop in San Francisco. And as you see here, we have no LLM involved yet. That's gonna come in the second part. So we are performing here these, um, these tool calls and essentially this is information that we can then feed into our large language model. So on its own, this is really just calling code. But what matters in an MCP server is that we are talking about the communication and the standardized layer to augment these large language models. This is the exciting part. Now everybody is building any kind of servers and you can connect your database, you can connect your calendar, you can connect even letting the LLM control your computer. And this is, because it is a standard, the fun starts to happen because everybody's adopting it and traction gets, on, gets behind it. But um, apart from just you know, doing these local searches and web searches, let's see it in action with a large language model. I have implemented here the MCP server on top of uh, Google Gemini Pro. I, I could be using Claude. However, Gemini Pro is really good and cheap. So essentially, we give it a function declaration so that it knows what to do. And then we'll give it a few queries. So let's, let's actually run this demo and see how it performs. So now the difference will be, instead of just myself calling the tools, Gemini will decide which tool to call. So actually be, before going to the demo, let's go over to our queries. We will be asking it, what is the latest AI research in 2025? Gemini will look at the available tools that it got from the NCP server it will decide which one it wants to call. It will perform the call, and then it will use the results in its answer to summarize, give us more info. So this is how you start to get an agent. This is how you connect the dots from implementing something custom and making it more and more powerful. Let's go ahead and run our little demo here. All right, I'll clear the screen. If I run this little demo here. Okay, so the first query, what is the A latest AI research in 2025? Um, so here it failed. It wasn't able to actually execute the query and that can happen. I will leave it in the video because this is something you have to deal with when you're building agents. Your tool definition and the way that they're run is not always um, working as you expect. So let's skip over this one, but the second demo actually worked. So find some good coffee shops in San Francisco. Here, Ge Gemini ran the analysis with the available tools. It saw, okay, I'm going to call Brave Local Search. It will generate the arguments that it wants to pass to the function. So now we're at this layer here. The client decided what it wants to do. It will then go ahead and call the server and ask it to perform the search. So here, our results um, came back from the server, and Gemini used these results as a way for it to summarize and give us better information. So you now have a research agent that you've implemented, and by the way, I could do this in like 20 minutes. So you now have more capacities for your agents, and let's just, for example, let's now um, see the third example. Tell me about the history of quantum computing. 
we go against it on the same loop. Gemini looks at your query, looks at the available tools, it, se it selects the Brave uh, web search, it gives it the arguments, the MCP server performs a tool call, sends back the results to the client, and Gemini takes the time to give you these results in a nicely LLM formatted way. So you could mix a bunch of MCP servers together where they could specialize. You could have one that is good with stock prices, one that is good with deep research, one that is good with crypto. And you can now come and create these powerful agents, but we'll go over that in another video. Uh, I'll make all of this code available. This was really just to explain the concepts in, in a way that's less around hype, but more around building the understanding. So let me know what you found um, interesting in MCP, if you have any favorite servers you like, or if you're building anything. So comment and like on this video and have a good day.